Samsung S21 Ultra, a two years old flagship smartphone from Samsung that costs $2,000 Canadian with tax. For that kind of money, you can buy a Honda Civic. Well, I'm not gonna say how many kilometers it has, but still, that's a car. This is my personal phone. In a couple of weeks, I have to pay back 600 Canadian dollars to keep it or give it back to my provider. Should I do it? Should you even look for a used Samsung S21 Ultra? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Hey everyone, it's Blade, and today we're gonna talk about the smartphone S21 Ultra. Yeah, I know the channel is called Blade, and two previous videos were about games, well, and Steam Deck, but phone, how it's related to the Blade theme, the whole gaming. To be honest, a lot of smartphones these days can actually act as a portable gaming console. However, this video will talk about this, but this is more of a tribute to a phone that I'm gonna give away because I'm not gonna pay $600 Canadian to keep it. That's kind of a spoiler. But anyways, a quick overview of the phone. It's a 6.8 inch shovel phone that looks fine in my hands and comparing to my face, but that's because I have big hands. But this is PSP 3000 from back in the days, you can see how much the phones got bigger in comparison with the old portable consoles. It has some weight to it. I wouldn't call it a heavy phone with 229 grams, but you can feel the weight. The screen is 3200 by 1440 pixels native with an option to decrease it for battery saving purposes. This phone has five cameras in total, four at the back, one at the front, I do have to specify that because my old S10 Plus had two cameras at the front, one which was ultra wide, one regular. In here, it has just a setting in the camera app that you can choose the ultra wide selfie mode. I wouldn't worry about it, but it helps sometime when you wanna take a group photos on the selfie camera. If you care about the numbers, the main camera on the back has 108 megapixels. However, to take a photo of 108 megapixels, you have to specify this in the camera app and then your photos will take around two, three seconds to be taken. If you do not care about the numbers and just wanna see a couple of photos, here they are. Original retail price in Canada was $1,859 Canadian, that's without taxes. And that was a lot for the phone. Even now it's, it's a lot. I think you can buy Galaxy Fold for $120 more than this phone. Well, it's on sale right now, the, the Fold, but still this was a really expensive phone. Now you can find this phone for around 700 Canadian dollars. You have to search for it on eBay and local version of eBay, which is called Kijiji, if someone doesn't know. But also some providers still carry this phone. However, if you get a phone on a contract, there is no point of getting any old phone, just get a new phone. And for this price point, you can actually get a Pixel 7. On sale, of course, but still, that's a newer phone. They do have the Pixel Pro, does come more expensive. So if we talk about 700 and 750 Canadian dollars price point, you have to compare those two devices or even any devices from Samsung. But you have to understand that even the Ultra from two years back has more features. They might be useless, to be honest, for some people, but there are still more features than on just a regular S23. So you, looking at the screen, why would you consider buying S21 Ultra right now? Well, the first point is if you like taking photos. This device has amazing photo and video capabilities. You have to understand that Instagram hates Android phones. And when you upload any photo on any, from any type of Android device, it just smashes the, the resolution because the files on Samsung are not actually really optimized to be honest the the photos might be okay but the videos like a 30 second video can be actually around 10 megabytes which will be heavily compressed by instagram to save their server space but anyways this camera has a 10 times optical zoom one of the cameras is 10 times optical which allows you to actually take photos that you wouldn't think you can take with the phone of course the quality is not as good as on the main camera but you have to consider that this is a small and thin, well, it's not small, 
It's a thin phone that can actually fit in your pocket. It's, it's not a camera with the lens that has optical zoom. S21 Ultra and the new S20 series Ultra phones have a hundred times zoom, which allows you to take a picture of a moon. However, a couple of weeks ago, a Redditor started to do an investigation to see if those photos are real. And apparently Samsung uses too much of the AI and the post-production uh, to make from a white blob actual moon. So a lot of people started calling it fake. It is still a cool party trick and people who don't know about the whole scandal thing, oh, it wasn't a scandal, but the people who don't know about this can actually be impressed. But it's not only a moonshot, you can use it uh, like horizontally also or like for bird watching i know the quality will not be good but still you can use a 100x zoom on the phone which is quite impressive and i'm you, of course you can also use the the numbers in between like 30 40 50 60 so if you find it more useful to use like 60 times zoom use that one no one forces you to use just 10 and then 100x zoom the second reason why you want to get this phone is a screen 6.8 inch AMOLED display with 120 Hertz refresh rate. It is variable, so that helps with the battery. However, you can also reduce the resolution of the screen if you think that it's too much of a quality for you or if you want to save your battery life. And the third reason and probably the most connected to this channel theme right now is if you're a gamer and you need powerhouse of a phone to play all of your games on android if you wanted to stream your games from xbox cloud services or even if you want to play some emulation it can emulate a lot of games from many consoles including psp and the consoles from the company that i should not call just in case but here you can see a bit of the gameplay. I know I don't play well and I need tactile buttons for any kind of a gaming experience. That's why I'm not really a big fan of the mobile gaming, but you can do that. And a lot of people are spending ton of money on a separate retro handheld consoles where if you need a good phone and you're a retro gamer, you can easily get this one. But if this phone is such a great device, why you shouldn't buy it at 2023? Well, the first one is price. As I mentioned before, originally it was around 2000 Canadian dollars with tax. Now you can find it for 700 or 750 used, it depends on condition again, but it's a two year old smartphone. It has Snapdragon 888 5G processor, uh, some versions in Europe has Exynos, but um, people are not happy with it. Again, if you're looking as an emulation phone, I think Exynos has problems with emulating a couple of old consoles. So again, if you're in Northern America, you don't have to worry about it. 99% of the devices are coming with Snapdragon processor. But for 700 Canadian dollars, if you're looking at the new market, you will not get anything like that. It will not have the full package of screen, cameras, performance, and 12 gigs of RAM. In addition, 128 gigabytes of storage for the cheaper version and 256 for a more expensive one. The second reason why you should not consider this phone is its size. I do love this phone and the size of it mostly works in favor, but most of the day-to-day -day tasks like answering messages or checking socials well, I'm afraid to do that with one hand outside. And actually just recently I dropped my phone outside. I'm really happy to, to carry a case. The third and probably the biggest concern is battery. You have to understand that this is a two year old phone and you will not find it new. It's probably gonna be refurbished or used. So you have to be careful with uh, battery capacity at that point of time. And in Samsung's, you don't have, well, at least I was looking at it and I couldn't find the actual battery um, capacity percentage and stock settings. But you have to use a third party app to check the battery health, which forces you to charge the phone a couple of times and then well, use the phone a couple of times to see the battery health. And if you're getting it secondhand, 
not a lot of people will be willing to do that for you and they will just find a different person to sell this phone to. On average, I get two to three hours of screen time with six or six to eight hours of screen off time. But most of my day, I listen to music using Tidal and using Bluetooth headphones. This actually makes me charge my phone at least once a day. So this phone is an amazing device if you can find it for a cheap price, probably less than 700 bucks. And you have to consider all of the details that were mentioned today, like the screen size, the actual size of the phone, if you need it, and the battery life. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel, press the like button, press dislike button if you hated this video. In the comments down below, please share your opinion on this phone and tell me if you're looking for a used phone right now, if you would get this one or you actually have a different preference and please share this preference with me in the comments section below. Now, go play some games.